In this video, I'm going to explain one of the separation techniques that you'll learn about in the chemistry GCSE, and that's paper chromatography. We're starting off with a short explanation of what it is, and then I'll go through how the required practical on this topic is carried out. Chromatography is a separation technique. What that means is you can use it to separate mixtures, and you can also use it to identify what's in a mixture. On the right here is what paper chromatography looks like in real life. We have a piece of chromatography paper suspended in a beaker with a small amount of solvent. We have spotted different compounds and mixtures that we're investigating across the bottom. On the left is how I'm going to represent chromatography diagrammatically. Here is our chromatography paper, and we call that the stationary phase because it doesn't move. Here is the solvent, and this is our mobile phase because it does move, and in fact it's going to flow through this stationary phase. As the solvent travels up the paper, when it reaches the different spots of substances, it's going to start taking these up the paper with it too. The amount that the substances travel up the paper depends on how soluble they are in that particular solvent. The more soluble, the further it travels. So in this example, we can see the middle substance is the most soluble in the solvent because it's travelled the furthest up the paper. Let's look at the chromatography of pure compounds. Pure compounds always produce just one spot. Where that spot is depends on the solvent. If the compound is very soluble in the solvent, it will be high up the paper. If it's not very soluble, then it won't travel as far up the paper. Now the chromatography of a mixture. These separate into different spots. This mixture contains two substances. Now I've put a small caveat in the box there because the separation does depend on the solvent you use. If your mixture contains compounds which have a similar solubility in the solvent you're using, they're going to travel the same distance. You need to use a solvent in which the compounds in your mixture have different solubilities in order to get this separation. The ratio of the distance moved by a compound to the distance moved by the solvent is known as the RF value. And it's calculated by the distance moved by the substance divided by the distance moved by the solvent. Different compounds have different RF values, and the same compound in different solvents will have different RF values. In my example on the left, we need to know how far the solvent has travelled. Let's say it travelled up to here. This is called the solvent front. And let's say the distance was 100 millimetres. Now, to calculate the RF value of the blue spot, you would measure the distance from the middle of the spot to where it started on the line at the bottom. Let's say that distance is 50 millimetres. That means our RF is 50 divided by 100, so 0 0.5. To calculate the RF of the red compound, you do the same thing. So measure the distance from the centre of the spot to the starting point, and let's say that's 80 millimetres. Then the RF for the red compound would be 80 divided by 100, which is 0.8. RF values are higher for substances that are more soluble in the solvent. Let's look at how chromatography is used to identify substances. Let's say we have three substances. A and B are both different known pure compounds. C is a mixture and we want to find out if compounds A and B are in it. Chromatography shows that C does not contain A because there is no spot with the same RF value as A. It contains B because another spot has separated that has the same RF value as B. But C also contains some other additional unknown compound that has travelled even further up the paper. This is what we'll be doing in the required practical, so let's see how it's done in the lab. Here is how you prepare your chromatography paper. 
First of all, you need a starting line parallel to the bottom of the paper on which you're going to put dots for all your known compounds and your unknown mixture. Make sure you do this in pencil as pen would smudge and travel with the solvent. Then label where you're going to put each substance along the line. I have four pure compounds A to D and an unknown mixture U. Use a capillary tube to dot each substance at its labelled spot. I actually could have done with spotting mine a few more times to get stronger colours, so when you do it, lightly press the capillary tube to where you want to form your dot, let it dry a few seconds, and then press it again a couple more times. This way you can get a strong colour without making the dot too big in the process because you don't want your dots to overlap. Make sure you use a different capillary tube for each substance. When you're done, tape or fold the top of your paper over a splint or something similar so that the paper can be suspended into the beaker. Now I'm putting a small amount of solvent carefully into the beaker. The solvent needs to be touching the paper, but you don't want its level to go as high as your starting line. The solvent in this practical is water. Compounds are more soluble in some solvents than others, and remember the more soluble a compound is, the further it will travel up the paper. Water is found to be a good solvent for these compounds because their different solubilities mean that they travel up the paper at varying, distinguishable distances which you can see happening now. Now I've fast forwarded the video to get to the end of this chromatography. Once the different spots have travelled up the paper to these different distances and before the solvent reaches the top of the paper, take it out and suspend it into an empty beaker to dry. It's a good idea before the paper dries out completely to mark the solvent front before you can't see it anymore. Once dry enough to work with, draw a line across where the water travelled to. Then draw a circle around each of your compounds and place a dot in the middle of them. Measure the distance from the starting line to each of these dots. And then finally, measure the distance between the starting line and the solvent front. So here's a photo of my final chromatography paper. Now we're going to calculate the different RF values. Remember RF is calculated by dividing the distance travelled by the compound by the distance travelled by the solvent. I found the distance travelled by compound A was 59mm, B was 45 C was 62 and D was 49, and the distance travelled by the solvent was 63 millimetres. So we work out the RF of A by dividing the distance it travelled with the distance the solvent travelled, so 59 divided by 63, and that gives us an RF value for A of 0 0.94. We can repeat that method for B, C and D, and we get these RF values. U produced two spots, which means it contains a mixture of two compounds. I'm going to call the bottom spot U1 and the top spot U2. The RF for U1 is 0 0.78 and for U2 is 0 0.95. Now we can see that the RF for U1 is the same as the RF for compound D. That means that unknown mixture U contains compound D. We can see that the value for U2 is very similar to that of the RF for compound A. So that means that U contains compound A as well. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, ask them below in the comments. And I've got loads more required practical videos on my channel, so go ahead and check those out.